What is coffee? How is it produced? Everything about coffee from A to Z. Coffee is a type of beverage obtained by separating the seeds from the fruits of the tree called coffea as a result of various processes and preparing it with brewing methods that differ from region to region. The seeds of these fruits are consumed by brewing in water after various processes. Although each country has its own unique drinks that are created according to cultural palate habits, coffee has managed to enter the lives of most people on earth, unlike these. Every society has attributed its own meanings to coffee, roasted, brewed and presented. Since the day it emerged, it has been a source of livelihood for countless people and has shaped the economy of the region where it grew up. Today, it continues to gain the appreciation of people by increasing its value and to reach every corner of the world without stopping. For this reason, it still remains the most traded commodity in the world after oil on which people wrote books, articles, poems, although it is not possible to describe the coffee, which it gives its name to its regions, goods, and material and moral meanings, from the very beginning to the point it came to, we have explained it for you in a way that will answer every question you may have, from the production to the presentation of coffee, and we have prepared the longest coffee article published on the internet for you. Sit back with your coffee and witness this long journey starting from the history of coffee. How was coffee discovered? Although coffee is one of the most consumed beverages in the world, there is no proven information about when it first appeared. This situation leads to the emergence of many independent rumors about the discovery of coffee. While this is the case, it is not possible to describe the discovery of coffee in precise terms, but we can have an idea about the discovery of coffee through the most spoken and common legends. The most famous of these stories we mentioned tells that coffee was found in Ethiopia thanks to goats. In this story, the Arabs, who were shepherds within the borders of Abyssinia at the time in a region connected to Ethiopia today, observed that the goats did not sleep for days and were full of energy. Later, when they examined what the goats did to find out the reason for this, they said they thought that they had eaten a plant that had never been seen before and that these plants had caused the situation. Later, they collected this plant and took it to their dervishes for advice, and when a dervish named Sazili saw the same effects on himself, the magical effects of coffee and caffeine were understood for the first time by human beings. The coffee bean, which is first ground into flour and mixed into the bread dough, is consumed. How did coffee spread around the world? After being consumed in Abyssinia for the first time, coffee was brought to Yemen and gained its real fame here. Today, Yemen is the first country that comes to mind when it comes to coffee, but this is not the real homeland of coffee. Yemen is the country that created the coffee culture. It is said that the person who made coffee spread from Abyssinia to the world was Ottoman officer Uzdemir Pasha. When Turkish coffee is compared with other coffee cultures periodically, it is enough to prove that this claim is true. Where does coffee get its name? It is said that Kaffa, a coffee-growing region in Abyssinia, gave its name to coffee. The similarity between the two words and the claim that coffee was discovered in Abyssinia support this view. Coffee cultures around the world. Each nation has consumed coffee in different ways as a result of the taste of its own culture and the characteristics of the climate in which it lives. These differences caused separation in the way the coffee was cooked and the additional materials made to flavor it. Each nation continues to keep its own coffee culture alive, but many of them have not been able to influence other countries on a global scale, and some have adopted their own culture to the whole world. Turkish Coffee Culture, 1540 Although it is said that Turks met coffee long before this date, the formation of Turkish coffee culture coincides with this period. Turkish Coffee The most distinctive feature of Turkish coffee is that it is cooked in a sesvi and served with its grounds. Although in other coffee cultures the coffee pulp is filtered after the brewing process, this is not the case with Turkish coffee. Even after serving, the coffee continues to brew in the cup. In addition, the portions are too small, resulting in a strong coffee. For those who do not like coffee this way, at first, it was tried to sweeten it by mixing honey. In the next period, sugar replaced honey. Despite such tasting features, Turkish coffee is a type of coffee that stands out not with its taste but with its spiritual aspect. The naive understanding of hunger by offering water to the guests along with coffee, the cooking of coffee at the betrothal ceremonies, the identification with Turkish delight, another important part of our culture, are just a few of the elements that strengthen the spiritual aspect of coffee. As a result, a cup of coffee has 40 years of memory. Many proverbs emphasizing friendship about coffee, such as coffee, find their place in our culture. Ottoman Coffee House 
What about Turkish coffee? Despite such a deep-rooted history and being the first coffee culture in history, why has it lagged behind other cultures today? Everyone has a different answer to this question, of course, there are those who think that this is not the case, but it is a fact that Turkish coffee culture cannot compete with the Italian coffee culture that dominates the whole world. The biggest reason for this is that it is at the forefront with its spiritual aspect rather than the taste aspect mentioned above. For example, when we look at coffees originating from Italy, there are many options such as espresso for those who like strong and intense flavors, lungo for a touch of softness, latte for those who like it with milk, and cappuccino for those who like foamy. But the variety in Turkish coffee is much more limited. This causes it not to appeal to everyone and not to be adopted around the world. Italian coffee culture, 1884. Espresso. Coffee culture in Italy started to rise in 1884 when espresso was invented. Most of the coffee types we consume today, whether Italian or not, have been fed from the Italian culture because they are espresso-based. The biggest reason why coffee is so widespread in Italy and that this spread has reached the whole world is that there are enough types of coffee to appeal to everyone. Even the cordado, an invention of the Spanish, or the Americano, the invention of the American soldiers, contains espresso at its base. This is an indication that Italians have mastered coffee and have influenced the world. French coffee culture, 1852. Filter coffee. Filter coffee, although it is a type of coffee claimed by the French, Italians and Germans, it is identified with the French culture. Filter coffee is obtained by filtering the coffee brewed by boiling from the pulp after brewing is finished. In France, it is usually served for breakfast, accompanied by a croissant, and is mostly consumed at this meal. The French use milk to soften filter coffee, but its plain consumption is more common around the world. Types of coffee beans Coffee bean is a plant with many species that we cannot count around the world, but we can talk about three species that are grown and attract attention, Arabica, Robusta, and Liberica. Among these species, Arabica and Robusta beans are the most widely grown and consumed coffee beans, although Liberica is produced in a limited amount in a limited area and is not traded much. Arabica The Arabica coffee bean, whose homeland is Ethiopia, meets almost two-thirds of the world's coffee production on its own. It was first described in the 1700s and is much more sensitive than Robusta coffee beans. The biggest difference between Robusta and Arabica types is that the amount of caffeine in Arabica beans is much less. Arabica beans are grown in the range of 600-200 meters. More contact with the fresh air ensures that its aroma is much higher than the Robusta kernel. Fruit and spice aromas are felt much more clearly. Its production is much more difficult than other types. The coffee fruit has to be hand-picked from the tree one by one. In addition, growing in high regions and in a harsh climate compared to others causes the harvest to burn from time to time and causes health problems for the workers. Is eternal. Robusta. It is grown at an altitude of 600 to 1,400 meters and meets one third of the world's coffee production. It was defined as a separate class in the 1900s. Its production is much easier than Arabica. It gives more crops and is collected much easier. Therefore, the cost is lower. Body and cocoa flavors are felt more. Its cream is much more than Arabica and Robusta is generally preferred in espresso blends. It is very difficult to find an espresso blend that does not contain Robusta in Italy. Where is coffee grown? Coffee growing mountains. Tropical climatic regions between the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer are the ideal places to grow coffee. The region where coffee will be grown should receive regular rainfall and the temperature difference should be low. Coffee cultivation is seen as one of the main sources of income in regions where tropical climates with these characteristics are effective. In various countries where this type of climate is not seen, coffee is produced, albeit a little. American continent. Most of the coffee production is met by South American countries. Apart from this, coffee is produced in other parts of America. In this region, the coffees of the countries of Guatemala, Costa Rica, Brazil, Colombia and Mexico come to the fore. Brazil alone accounts for 30% of the world's coffee production. African continent The African continent, the region where coffee was discovered, also has an important share in coffee production. The African continent has climates that vary from region to region. While some areas are deserted, some areas have ideal properties for coffee farming. 
In the African continent, countries such as Ethiopia, Ivory Coast and Kenya have developed in coffee production. African beans have a more fruity aroma. Arabian Peninsula Coffee was first consumed as a beverage in the Arabian Peninsula. It was the Arabs who discovered coffee. Therefore, they took part in production as well as consumption. The leading country in coffee production in this region is Yemen, which is identified with coffee. Asia, Pacific region. Although the Asian continent is very limited, it is one of the places where coffee is produced. The largest coffee producer in the Asian continent is Indonesia. Despite the constant floods and raids in Indonesia, coffee fields are frequently destroyed, but a significant portion of its people continue to make a living by producing coffee. Apart from Indonesia, Vietnam is one of the Asian countries where coffee is produced. Production stages of coffee. Coffee, which we love to drink every day and which has become one of the indispensable parts of our lives, goes through a long adventure from the moment it is planted to the ground until it is ready to be roasted as raw beans. While this long and arduous road provides a large employment of workers in the countries where coffee is produced, it also increases its value by increasing its cost. There are many stages such as planting the first seed into the ground, blooming of the coffee flower, collecting the harvest, peeling the coffee fruits from the shell, fermenting and packaging for shipment by classification.